The Almighty God does things that sometimes we cannot comprehend and we can't understand. But by the grace of God and the mercy of God, even in times when we can't understand them, even in trials and tribulations, we got to give glory to God. This is a test, a test of our faith. So many people in this room work so hard. But I tell you what, there's not another man on this planet that I wouldn't have his back and do this all over again. Can I get an amen? We know in our heart of hearts that we didn't lose. Nebraska lost today. We understand that. We know the man that this is, and we know the attacks and the smears that came um, from those that are, are, are not as godly natured as we'd hoped. But I got to tell you, I'm faithful. Because I don't understand it. I can't comprehend it. But I know the God that we serve does not make mistakes. Amen. 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 And I know my brother Charles Herbster, and he ain't done fighting. Y'all give a warm spiritual welcome for the man of God, the man of God who put the word of God in the forefront for this state, who called to put God back in our schools, bring God back to our families, and to heal the spiritual mess that's plaguing Nebraska and our country. Welcome, my brother, Mr. Charles Herbster. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, I just called Jim Pellin a few minutes ago, so we've got that done properly and correctly. The second thing I'll share with you is you need to know that we got about 65,000 votes. That wasn't enough, but that was a significant amount of votes, far more than even what Governor Ricketts received in 2014 when he ran the first race. And uh, I have been through this before. I just wasn't the candidate. I was backstage with Mitt Romney and his wife in Boston, Massachusetts when they lost. I was here with Bo McCoy in 2014 when we didn't make that one work. And I was at the White House with the Trump family in 2020. So I do know how it feels not to be the victor. But let me just say this, doesn't change a thing as my good friend Jack said about the fact that we're going to fight together to make sure that critical race theory is out of the school systems in the state of Nebraska. We're gonna take sex education out of the school systems in the state of Nebraska. We have to fight that. We're now, we're now just gonna do it a little bit differently, okay, but we're not gonna quit. We cannot quit on Nebraska. We cannot quit on each other. And we certainly cannot quit on the foundation that built America almost 246 years ago, okay? We got it, we got it, we got to keep fighting. Yeah. I want to say thank you to a group of people, certainly Ellen Keast, who was the campaign manager, yeah. and, and the whole crew. Ellen, you, can you bring Emily and everybody up here? Can we bring the whole crew up? And I've got some incredible volunteers right here in front. You wanna come stand right here? Why don't you all turn around, come join me and, and face this way. And of course, Rod Edwards, Deputy Campaign Manager. And, and where is Corey and, uh, where's Corey and David Boss here? Are they here? Where are they at? Are you over here? Okay, you guys come up here, okay? They're the best. Come on up, David. Come on up, Corey. Let's bring them up, Corey Lewandowski, David Bossy.
these guys, these guys are fighters. They know how to fight. They're fighters. And if you haven't seen the new movie, Rig, that David Bossy just introduced here about three weeks ago, you need to see that new movie. It's incredible. Now, would you give all of this group in front and behind me a big round of applause and thank you? That's not good enough. Come on. And then you all just stay up here with me a minute. It looks good, okay? It really looks good, okay? And then we've got the women for Herbster. Just, just raise your hand. I know we've got some T-shirts out there. But if you're women for Herbster, even if you don't have your shirt on. And then I had a lot of endorsements, but... I have to give reference to the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Nebraska, Mike and Susan Foley. And Colonel Tom Nesbitt. Colonel Tom? I will say this, regardless of the outcome, you can be assured, I believe there was more people praying over this election than's probably prayed over in any governor's election that I know of in the entire you know, history of Nebraska. So I know you were all praying. Give yourselves a hand. You're all incredible prayer warriors. And then I have Michelle Keithley, who's been with me for five years. She's my executive assistant, and I have Brandon, and I've got Ashley. Where are you at? Oh, Ashley, come on, Ashley, come on out here. You're not supposed to be back there by yourself. Let's bring Ashley up here. Michelle, you want to come up and join your son? Okay. Now, when you do this, you always have a risk of leaving somebody out, so I apologize. Kathy, would you come up here, my prayer warrior from Hebron and now Beatrice, Nebraska? And let me just say that this, I have been told by many people, Corey and David maybe have some thoughts on this, that this is probably one of the nastiest governor campaigns in the state of Nebraska. Is that true? Yes. Okay. So that's sad. And none of us want to go home tonight realizing that that might have played a very, very significant role in the results for whatever reason. But I can assure you of this. This is what I said all along, and that is, it was, it's in God's hands. You know, there's a reason. I don't know why. don't know what the reason is. Uh, just like I don't know what the reason was in 2020 when we didn't get a second term in the White House. But there, there is a reason. Pardon? Not yet. Not yet. You're right. Not yet. But we just have to be strong. We just have to not give in and not give up. I cannot stress that enough. This does not change my attitude, doesn't make me negative, doesn't make me sad. It's not that I don't have something else to do, but along with everything else that I've done, I'm gonna make sure we continue to help support godly candidates at every level in our state and every level in our nation. And those of you out there tonight that are thinking about maybe you were going to run for something or do something, don't let this deter you in any way, okay? This is just a little bump on the road. We got to make sure that those people 
that used the type of negativity and the type of things that were used in this campaign do not win the war. They may win the battle, but do not win the war. Now, I, I know I've got Senator Erdman, Senator Breezy, Senator Halloran, and their wives. Would you all wave your hand because they all gave me early endorsements. And then I have Steve and Julie Kerwin. Steve, Julie, would you raise your hand? They've got the Herbster truck. And then Jim Smith. Jim, would you raise your hand? Jim was incredible in so many great things we did in Omaha. And I can tell you, we did some really great things in Omaha, did we not? We did. I mean, just think, we didn't win, but we had about 65, 66,000 people who voted for what all of you have been involved in over the past several months. And we got to give all of those people a hand, okay? And, and Lorna, why don't you come join us on stage because your husband's up here. Um, I can just tell you that my entire campaign staff, the volunteers, uh, everybody from Brandon to James to Warren to Michelle, Ed, Mandy, uh, we could list names all night. You really all need to be up here on stage. But I just want to say that I'll be down there in a minute so we can talk and visit a little bit before you go home tonight. I just want to say, let's give all of these people who were involved in this a big round of applause. And, and let, me just, let me just kind of wrap it up by saying this. I said this all along, and I meant it, and I mean it tonight. I said I would rather take the shot at running for governor and not succeed than to not have taken the shot and think always, what if I would have tried? So win or lose, that's where I was from day one. Obviously, I do everything to win, but you don't always win in life, okay? That doesn't, that's not the way life works. We didn't win on this one, all right? But I just want to encourage you, we have to try to unite the Republican Party in Nebraska. It's going to take some, it's going to take some work, and we're going to have to band together, those of us who are godly conservatives. But I would just share with you that we have to do that. It's necessary. I'm going to go to the event tomorrow and obviously have the chance to shake Jim Pillen's hand and congratulate him. I want him to know that. I called him tonight. We had a chat on the phone. Um, I am going to have Corey and David come up here just a minute, if you would, both of you guys, please, over here. Because you have been so involved at a national level with this campaign, and I think it would be good if maybe you just came up here and each shared just a little bit from your heart about the campaign, what you saw, what you feel, and... Um, just share a little bit. Well, first, first, first of all, I just want to... I don't, Get a mic. I, I, I don't need a mic. Uh, I, everybody can hear me just fine. I just want to say thank you for doing what you did. Putting yourself out, it's a hard thing to do. Oh, it's and not what, easy. And, and what you <laughs> said, this was a tough, dirty, nasty campaign, and I'm sorry you went through it, but you are a better man for it. And as you said, this is God's plan. We don't know why, but uh, I just want to say thank you for what you did for Nebraska and for talking about the issues like you did. So we appreciate, I, I just want to say thank you. To Trump. Just to echo what Dave said, you know, Charles, um, you've been a warrior. You, you have stood there and, and fought for what you believed in, which is a yes. hard thing to do. And you didn't need to do this. You did this because you wanted to. And I think the people of Nebraska 
are going to look back on this election, and they're going to thank you for pointing out that critical race theory doesn't belong in our schools, that you have the right to have the Second Amendment in your life every day by having a concealed and carry license without having it required in the state, and all the other issues you brought forth in this campaign that weren't going to be discussed if you didn't do it. And Charles, you're a man whose heart is so big and so gracious, and the people that you talk to feel that every day. So thank you for letting me be a very small part of this. I'm so grateful to be your friend. Thank you. And then I want to bring up America's governor, Governor Christy Nome. She here? She was. Oh, okay. All right. Um, again, thank you so much. If somebody can find her, we'll visit a little bit and then we'll bring her back up here. Um, we just love each and every one of you. And you know what? The future is bright. We're going to whip Congress and whip Senate. In 2022, in November, I guarantee you we are. We're going to turn around the direction we're going as a national basis today, where Biden has taken us, where the Democrats have taken us, the liberals have taken us. We have to do that. We have to continue to fight against drugs coming across the Nebraska border. We have to fight against illegals coming into the state of Nebraska. We can't let up on any of those individuals. And if we've got some State Patrol and police officers and sheriffs, would you raise your hand? I know we've got some here. My, 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 one, one of my most difficult things is I was absolutely convinced that I was gonna have the opportunity to do some incredible things for our troopers and for our police officers and for law and order and for our sheriffs and deputy sheriffs. I love all of those individuals. I love our veterans. In fact, if you're a veteran, would you raise your hand? All our veterans raise their hand. Let's give them a round of applause. Tom, some other way, you and I have to team up and we're gonna get through what we need to get through to honor our state troopers our sheriffs, our deputy sheriffs, and our police officers, our first responders, because without them, none of us are safe. We have to honor them. None of them are. None of us are safe without them. And and they were committed to this campaign, and I committed to me as being the next governor. So please make sure that message gets to everybody. And we're still going to invite him here and have some prime rib. Okay. We're still going to do that, all right? Uh, God bless each and every one of you. Is Christy here yet? Anybody? Okay. All right. Um, well, I'll come down and shake some hands. Thank you. <laughs> God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to come down and join you, okay? Thank you, guys.